From the studios of the Ram Cave, in the home of the Camellias, I'm Joe Terosian, and this is the Burbank Faith Virtual Good Morning for October the 31st, 2023. Uh, as always, we are praying for our young people. Today, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 20, verses 25 through 28. This is episode number 157 of a ministry without parole. So really happy you're you're here today. Happy we're here. It is Halloween. Uh, <clears throat> um, yeah, it's Halloween. What I love about Halloween is it's kind of like a yard marker for me. I, I or a or a, or a marker that for the years it just keeps me. I remember where I was this Halloween, that Halloween, all the years we ran uh, harvest festivals. Either I was youth pastoring at TC or at Burbank. We did it for close to 20 years there. Uh, all the times, well, not very many times, I actually took my own daughters out trick-or-treating. Uh, and you can remember their costumes and everything. It's just funny how quick uh, the time goes by. But here we are. We're not going to talk about Halloween today. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 20, verses 25 through 28. But we will be um, focusing on our application and our application will be about how do we minister to and pray for our young people. In this passage, Jesus is getting ready to go into the seven woes where he's just woeing the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. And uh, he picks it up here at the 25th verse. And we're going to read through 28. And, uh, and then we're going to go. We'll go from there. Okay. Then Jesus said, good morning, Mindy May. Thank you so much for clicking on. Uh, no, Jesus didn't say good morning, Mindy May. I said good morning, Mindy Way. Uh, verse 25, then Jesus said to the crowds, to his disciples, uh, and to his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Uh, so you must be careful uh, to do everything they tell you. But do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries uh, wide and tassels on their garments long. They love to, uh, the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogue. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi by others. <coughs> quick mention here, real quick. The phylacteries are... are what would be considered a scripture uh, across the front of their head here. Uh, and of course, all the garments and tassels because Judaism at this point, at this point had become a show me religion, right? Uh, I mean, they, they had drifted so far from God. It was, it was all ritual and, and tradition and there was no relationship with God so much. So they couldn't even recognize Christ when he came. And, uh, and so that's one thing. Uh, that Jesus is saying here. Also, uh, we, we find that there's a platitude that's always thrown out at us in the church and outside of the church. We find it has scriptural merit. Uh, unlike uh, God helps those who helps themselves, you can find Mike Picard. Thank you so much for clicking on. You will find in the scripture, practice what you preach, right? Practice what you preach. Um, and, uh, and so there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, they're very full of themselves. Uh, and uh, they're very uh, high on themselves. In fact, when you get to the next verse, Jesus says, you're not supposed to be that way. Don't even be that way. Uh, I read this, and, uh, and what I see is Jesus telling us, encouraging us, warning us to be discerning. We have to show them respect. We need to show respect to our denominational leaders, our faith leaders. We need to show them respect because there was a moment when they were called and there, they, there was a moment when they submitted to the discipline and to the training. There was a moment they did those things, but there could very well be a moment where they go off the rails, right? If King Solomon can go off the rails, so can someone in our modern day. If uh, Judas, after seeing all the miracles of Christ, can go off the rails, uh, so can some of our modern day leaders. We show them respect. We listen to them. We support them as long as they're preaching truth. But then when they stray from truth, here Jesus is saying, we need to recognize what they do and to be discerning. He's not saying be disrespectful, but when they go astray, he's saying, don't be like them. And there's a, there's a, a reason for this. And I'm going to keep going further here. Discernment 
is one, if not the most critical of aspects in a believing loyalty in Christ. Besides the belief, besides obedience, right? We also have to be careful about who we follow. Many will say, I follow Christ, but a lot of these folks that are out there, we don't hold them accountable for their actions. They call themselves Christians, but they don't believe in the scriptures. They call themselves Christians and we let them get away with it and they deny the resurrection of Christ in the flesh, right? Uh, you can't do this. We, we, we give them ordination papers and they, and they acknowledge uh, God and the feminine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. God's masculine. You can't change on these things. When you start doing that, you are no longer Christian and you are no longer as an individual obliged to sit under their teaching. You have to be discernible, right? And why? Why do we continue to do this? Because we will be accused of something far worse than racism or homophobia or, or being called a MAGA. Uh, you, know, you know, the present day Christian lives in the ultimate fear of being referenced as judgmental. And so we won't be discerning, right? We won't be openly discerning. Not even for the correction of the individual who's gone off the rails and needs correction, but we won't even be, um, we won't even be discerning when it comes to who those individuals are influencing, right? Even when we see it happening right before our eyes, right? We are so terrified of being considered judgmental. A few years ago, I had my Myers-Briggs test. I, I my personality test, my daughter made me take it because I, I, I had never done anything like that before. And I came back as an INTJ, which didn't surprise me. I am introverted, right? <laughs> I, I, I am more introverted, introverted than anyone would ever think. Uh, intuitive, yeah, I, I try to read situations and stuff. Thinking, I consider a lot of things. But then that J part is there. I'm judging, which means I make decisions. I, 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 I settle thoughts in my head about situations, certain individuals, things that come up. That's not condemning anybody to hell. But it's assessing and saying, you know what, that teacher's off the rails and he's not going to have any say in my pulpit. He's not going to be around my people. I don't want him having influence in my home, let alone my life. You know what, folks? That's, that's making a judgment, right? That's making a right judgment. That's being discerning. And Jesus in the scripture is calling us to be discerning, that we don't just blindly follow. That's where we get that phrase, drink the Kool-Aid, right? We drink the Kool-Aid when we just blindly follow. So yeah, I'm an INTJ, uh, the heavy emphasis on the J there at the end. I don't run away from that, I'm proud of that. But by the Spirit of the Lord, we all have the ability to discern and assess what we see. And when our leaders in the church are going off the rails on a crazy train, we are not obliged to go off the rails with him. And here's the point. I say all that to bring us to this point, because if we don't call out those individuals when they go off the rails, okay? Forget about what they're saying and everything, but when they're off the rails, suddenly the onus is on us. And if we don't call them out, uh, our young people will call it out. And what they'll see is our hypocrisy. One thing young people cling tenaciously to, and that's calling out hypocrisy. It's the yeah, but, right? Mom, you do this. Dad, you do this. And the second we're hypocritical, we start to lose influence in the lives of our young people, right? Right, wrong, indifferent, uh, we lose influence. And the second we lose influence, wow, that opens the door for somebody else or some other thing to come in and be influential to them. And uh, that's hypercritical. We have to do that because uh, we have to be. Now, you understand when we're hypocritical, we play into what the culture says about the church. Honestly, people with a believing loyalty in Christ are not hypocritical. When we're walking the way God wants us to walk, we're not hypocritical. But there's an entire narrative out there in our media, in our entertainment, in all of our social platforms, in every place we go, that the church is narrow-minded, hypocritical, racist, bigoted, homophobic, trans, blah, 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 right? We know those things. And so when the kids, the young people, see us being hypocritical, and not calling out the failings of, of the church when the church is absolutely wrong on certain issues, they'll, they'll see that and we will lose influence. The problem with the believing loyalty in Christ is often and always you're obliged to live a believing loyalty in Christ. 
even when it hurts you socially, right? Even when it hurts you career-wise. Um, checking out the dreaded 15-minute tone. It's going to go off here in a few minutes. Um, even when it hurts you uh, in the moment, doing the right thing for the kingdom of God might not bless you in that particular moment. It might upset a few people. Good morning, Pastor Z. Thank you so much for clicking on. It might hurt you in the moment, but outside of gaining some personal strength and a better dependence on God, you're going to get hurt. But in the long run, for the kingdom, for our young people, it will grow the kingdom. It will grow their faith. When they see you stand there, your ground, right? Consistently living the life of Christ out before the world and our young people will often make all the difference. Even when you think no one's noticing, even when you think no one's watching. When I was younger, I was... Uh, I was heading into ministry, and, and, and there, was a, there was a bachelor party I was invited to. And we were going to go out. We went to, this, we went to a, a, a restaurant and had pizza and stuff. And then we came back to someone's place, and they were going to have a stripper. And the stripper wasn't going to strip all the way down. It was going to be clean, uh, down to bikini or whatever. And I knew I couldn't be there. I couldn't. I had to go to work that night at 11 p.m., <laughs> I left for work at eight. I left three hours early. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't share that with anybody. Um, about nine years later, eight, nine years later, I'm getting ready to do a wedding for somebody. And someone said, do you know why you're doing this wedding? I, I said, because I was asked. They said, no, because nine years ago, the, the groom was at that party <laughs> and he saw you leave. And I said, well, I had to get to work. He says, no, he knew you didn't have to go to work till close to midnight. And that was something that was a testimony I never, <laughs> I never thought of, but it paid dividends down the road, right? Um, consistently living out the life of Christ before the world and before our young people will make all the difference. You'll gain strength. Uh, you'll grow closer to God. And it might not bless you in the moment, but you know what? It'll gain influence in the lives of others. Don't do anything for show. Avoid the feebleness of keeping up appearances, right? Well, this is my church, and I just want to keep going here. I don't want to look like I'm running out. No, 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 no. If your church sucks, your church sucks. If your pastor's not preaching the truth, say they're not preaching the truth and move on. You don't have to disrupt the service, but just move on. You don't have to submit to that, and it's wrong to submit to that because you're not holding them accountable, and you could be hurting the lives of those around you. In all things, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. I think that's in Philippians, right? And when we conduct ourselves always in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, when we do that, that will be the turning point for our young people, for us, and for the world. Folks, the enabling of that, the power behind that, that is the divine power of Christ in us. That is a power the world cannot cope with or understand. That is the power that destroys demonic strongholds and demolishes arguments and every pretense that sets itself against Christ. That is the power that comes by Christ's presence in your life. And that is what we want for our young people. And that is why we pray for our young people. And that is why we'll win. Amen? Amen. That is why we will win. Thank you, Mindy May. Thank you, Pastor Z. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Did you wake up today and say, how can I hurt the enemy? I'm going to stand strong and I will not be hypocritical and I will not compromise my faith no matter what the moment is saying to me. I will stand firm. Thank you, Mike Picard. Okay, folks, that's it right there. Uh, hey, I got that in before the dreaded 15-minute uh, tone. Hey, quick, some prayer requests uh, coming through here. Um, we do want you to continue to pray for Colby Van Dyke as he recovers from his surgery. Uh, thank you, Mariah. Yes, we are going to win. Absolutely, we are going to win. Don't be discouraged by what you see in the world today. Uh, be, in, be in prayer for Colby Van Dyke. Be in prayer for Stacy Salmas, her sister Christine, looking at surgery. Uh, be in prayer for my wife. She has a kidney infection that's really uh, kind of chewing her up right now and uh, trying to get in to see a doctor. Be in prayer for her. Um, be in prayer for a woman named Kim Dedini who was hospitalized 
with an aggressive brain tumor a few weeks ago. Anthony Huerta, as he starts PT for his broken ankle, we did get a note from John Strickland, and I, was, I wasn't sure when to share it, but then I realized it was a public sharing, so I can. John Strickland has been was our kinsman redeemer at Burbank Faith for years. Whether he was here or living in North Carolina, I can't tell you uh, the blessings that uh, he brought to my family's life and to the life of Burbank Faith. He's getting on, and he's in North Carolina, and he has an EKG scheduled for the 3rd of November. They found an aneurysm on an aorta uh, near his heart, and uh, we just need to pray for John Strickland. So if you can keep John Strickland in prayer, continue to pray for Bill Alajaji, Roxy Clark, Jay Sturgeon with pa Parkinson's, uh, Heather, our, uh, our girl that needs salvation, Rafi, our neighborhood boy, Corey and Christy still grieving over the loss of their son, Seth, Frank Griffin in Arizona, Richard Stewart in Vegas, Jan, our 88-year-old Marine, Piper Morris and her son, Grayson, uh, who's battling crab leukodystrophy. Grayson turned eight. Uh, yesterday, and I think he's exceeded his life expectancy. He's more than doubled it, and uh, I think that's the activity of God, and that is the loving care of Piper and her family towards her son. Um, we did post a picture yesterday on Facebook of, uh, of Grayson and, and his mom. If you get a chance, let's, let's say wish him a late happy birthday. I'm sure they would appreciate it, and thank you to all of you who did that. I think it just shows the power of God and it makes me feel good that we're on track at Burbank Faith Virtual. Uh, continue to pray for those battling cancer. We'll remember Colby as he recovers, Rachel Gilbert, Dion up in Oregon, Emmanuel, our great friend, Tim Burns up in North, uh, and Kathy who's battling breast cancer. Continue to pray for Vision Paradise, pray for Burbank Faith, um, pray for the ministries that go on there and that we do find the right Armenian ministry for 505 South 6th Street. And of course, Granite Ridge Home Camp as we get ready for Man Camp November 10th through the 12th. Okay, let's pray. Let's pray for our young people. Let's pray for courage to stand strong uh, for them and for the kingdom. Lord, we do thank you again for loving us, Lord. And we just ask today, Lord, on this day, this, this Halloween day that in many ways we're afraid of, we cede it over to the enemy. We don't cede anything, God. Help us to stand strong. Help us to give testimony when people talk about spirits and, and demons and scary things, Lord. Give us the courage to speak about your truth and the power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we pray that Holy Spirit is active in the lives of our young people, Lord. We pray it is destroying the platforms of those who speak evil to our young people. We pray it is moving in the spiritual realms and dealing destruction uh, to strongholds of Satan, which are in our public schools and a lot of our public forums, Lord. Lord, we pray for that. And Lord, we pray for the humbleness to come to those who uh, have subscribed to the theories and practices of the world, Lord, uh, that they would uh, reconsider what they're doing, reacquaint themselves with you. And Lord, let us, uh, as those that have influence, stand strong uh, in all these situations. Lord, let us stand strong. Lord, we pray for the needs represented on our board here. We thank you for Piper and for Grayson and Grayson's birthday. We pray for Colby Van Dyke that his surgery went well. Uh, we lift up Christine Salmas. We lift up Kim Dedini. I lift up my wife and her kidney infection. We, we pray that you're with Anthony Huerta during uh, uh, physical uh, therapy. And Lord, we ask for John Strickland. We ask for him today, Lord, that you be with him right now, right where he's at there. And I, I believe it's either in Four Corners or he's in uh, uh, Four Oaks or, or Benson, North Carolina, Lord, that you can be with him. We pray for Bill Alajaji, Roxy Clark, and Jay. Lord, we ask for Heather and Rafi. We ask for Corey and Christy and Frank and Richard Stewart and those battling cancer, Rachel Gilbert, uh, Dion, Colby, Emmanuel, Tim, Kathy. And we pray for Vision Paradise, God. We pray for the ministry of Pastor Walter, Pastor Francis, Edgar, and that team there, and that we would all remain like-minded in you, Lord, those, those of us at Burbank Faith. And that this Sunday, this communion Sunday, wouldn't be an ordinary Sunday, but that it would be an extraordinary Sunday. Uh, the best Sunday we've ever had. Lord, help us to keep uh, going on to higher ground in you. Uh, Lord, we ask for Granite Ridge, for Man Camp, and all the things that are taking place there. Lord, bless the staff, bless those that come. Lord, truly, uh, Lord, let your spirit have its way and let lives be changed. Bless us this day. Lord, we thank you again for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, outstanding, folks. Thanks for sticking with me. 
Um, did I go past? I guess I did. I went almost 20 minutes. You know, Shay's going to be on my case. Okay, um, let me just uh, remind you of this. <coughs> uh, real quick, we are having Communion Sunday this week. If you visit us once, visit us on Communion Sunday. It's the first Sunday of the year, of the month, and uh, it's every first Sunday. And we know there's a lot of Burbank Faith virtual people out there that can only come once in a while. And it's good for us to be together. This is good. Being in present together with worship and taking communion is even better. And so if you can only come once every four weeks, choose this Sunday to come. You're not going to be made a member. You're not going to be given a special project. Uh, I'll leave it between you and the Lord if you tithe. It's just good to be together. Amen? Amen. Okay, we're going to let you go. And as we let you go, remember this truth. Those of us with a believing loyalty in Christ, those of us who are not moved by the social winds, we are the revolution. Go forward in that urgency because you, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Amen? Amen. God bless. Take care. And uh, thank you so much, Mindy, Mike, Mariah, everyone else who clicked on, whoever's going to click on later. Sometimes it's Lucille. Lucille, we say hi to you. Uh, God bless, and uh, we will see you manana. Take care.